Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing really well and welcome back to my podcast, Life of an Entrepreneur. Thank you so much for listening to last week's episode where I talked about how to grow on social media. That was part one, so if you've not listened to that yet, then go and listen to that one first because this one's going to kind of follow on from that, um, how to grow on social media, part two. So... <laughs> Let's get into it then. So last week I spoke a lot about how to grow on Instagram in particular and I shared kind of what I found worked for me over the years in terms of Instagram. In this episode I want to talk more about some of the other social media platforms and how successfully engaging with your social media audience across multiple platforms can really help grow your whole audience, like help boost website traffic, help improve your search engine results, page ranking. So kind of showing up at the top of the page when someone types in your name or pet portrait artist or wildlife artist or colored pencil tutorials, you kind of rank higher in the search engine results. Boosting your social media audience across multiple platforms can also help promote customer loyalty. So having returning customers for commissions or returning buyers for original work and just overall business longevity. So you can be a successful full-time artist with a long-term future. If you haven't already, I'd probably recommend putting a link to your link tree in your bio across all social media platforms. Link tree basically allows you to create a personalized and customizable page that kind of houses all the important links or like social media links that you want to share with your audience. So on mine, I've got the links to like every social media platform that I have. So it's an easy way for people to find me across other social media platforms. Being seen on social media and having that online presence is essential in like growing and scaling your art business and in a way everything kind of needs to interconnect. Some people might want to concentrate like all their efforts on building up one singular platform so you kind of you know you're achieving that maximum engagement on that one platform kind of like what I've done on Instagram really because my following on Instagram is a lot, lot higher than everywhere else. And other people might find value kind of spreading their presence across multiple platforms to reach that broader audience and expand the whole like brand's visibility. There's so many apps available now where you can schedule um, all of your social media content across all platforms. And this is definitely something that I need to look into. Um, if any of you are already using a certain app, then I'd love to hear your recommendations by commenting below. I did used to use one. I can't remember what it was called. It was free though, but you couldn't, I think you could only do certain Instagram platforms. You couldn't do all of them. And this was quite a few years ago. Whereas now I feel like I actually need it. <laughs> it just makes things so much easier. I feel like having everything just in one place and organized and scheduled a little bit more. So yeah, let me know your recommendations if you use one of these apps, because it can be quite overwhelming having so many different platforms. Um, so having that place where I can organize it all would definitely help, I feel like. Facebook, TikTok and YouTube, I kind of touched on in last week's episode, obviously with the main focus surrounding Instagram. Facebook is the most popular social media platform in terms of its users. So having a Facebook page is super, super important, especially when you're first starting out. A lot of people will probably find you and contact you through your Facebook page more than anything else. I definitely found that that was the case for me very early on, whereas now it's a lot more Instagram or through my website. Also on Facebook, you can join other Facebook pages and other Facebook groups that already have that really large audience and community. So you can make connections with other artists and you can share your work to gain that immediate exposure. And then if the people from these Facebook groups love your work that you've posted in there, um, you could also link your Instagram or your link tree in the caption of your post. Um, and it might just bring those people from Facebook over to your other platforms. TikTok is a funny one. <laughs> Um, unlike Instagram, it's it doesn't really have an algorithm, so it's much more random and it's harder to have that kind of strategy in place to be able to grow your account and sort of estimate how quickly you will grow based on how it's done previously because it is so random and all over the place. I found that the reels that I posted on Instagram last year that went viral, 
hardly got any views when I posted them on TikTok, like the exact same videos. And it's always the case of the videos that you spend so long editing and you think it's really good, they hardly ever get any views. And then the ones that take you like two seconds to make always do quite well. It's just always the case. It's just typical with TikTok. But then again, it's not, it's not always the case because you just never really know what's gonna sort of pop off with TikTok. One thing I don't like with TikTok is keeping up with trends and having to do all of those type of videos for it to kind of do well. Whereas Instagram I see is more of a portfolio. TikTok is a bit more random. Like you can literally show whatever you want. I try and show more of like the behind the scenes. I do post the same videos that I post to Instagram as well, just reusing the content. But I guess TikTok is less professional than Instagram so you can show more of yourself. You can do those like less edited, really raw videos that are behind the scenes that you might not necessarily want to post on Instagram. One amazing thing about TikTok though that I do obviously really love is just the fact that one video can go viral and absolutely catapult your business and your artwork then has the potential to be seen by millions of people which opens you up to so many more opportunities. Instagram is a lot more structured I'd say TikTok's more random, Instagram, you can kind of estimate your growth a bit more. But yeah, with TikTok in that sense, I guess it is good, but it's just so random that you just never know what is gonna actually pop off and go viral, if anything. You could be trying for ages and, and nothing really pops off. And again, it comes down to that consistency and just sort of trying different things, trial and error, different sounds, different video formats, just consistently and regularly posting as much as you can and documenting your work. But yeah, TikTok definitely seems to be based more around trends, but I still try and create like compelling and original content that like resonates with my target audience and my niche. And I still try and utilize like trending well not trending hashtags because I guess for ages it was the for you page which was the trending hashtag but because it's been used by like billions of people the likelihood is when someone types in for you page as a hashtag yours is probably going to be towards the bottom with everyone else's so your video is never going to be seen so use hashtags that again sort of filter your video into your niche I do try and use trending sounds on TikTok to kind of ride the wave <laughs> of that trend um, but again, you know, people get sick of listening to the same sounds and the same music. So again, trying to find something that's an up and coming trending sound rather than one that's been done a thousand million times um, is a lot more effective, I feel like. And there's even people that you can follow that are like their whole account is dedicated to finding those upcoming trending sounds. Like they'll post this in the next few weeks, this is gonna absolutely pop off and then you can use it and you're kind of ahead of the game. So following people like that is quite helpful as well. YouTube is a slow burner at first, but it definitely gains momentum. Like with Reels and TikTok videos, YouTube also has YouTube Shorts, which is like short form videos. And in terms of exposure, you know, using those trending sounds and hashtags and everything that I've mentioned previously in the form of a YouTube short can really give your whole YouTube channel a boost and bring people to your channel to watch your longer form videos. So like I said at the beginning, everything is just kind of interconnecting. And if those features are there, use them to your advantage. I wanted to talk about the blue tick on Instagram, which I probably should have mentioned in the previous episode, seeing as I was going on about Instagram. Um, but I think, you know, still this is quite fitting and, you know, a topic worth talking about when it comes to growing on social media. So the blue tick on Instagram is basically a verified badge, which is shown next to a username, which now means that Instagram has confirmed that it's the authentic account for that person or brand. So it's basically there to try and help prevent impersonation. I think previously the blue tick would always be associated with like a celebrity because Instagram would tend to give that verified badge to a person or a brand that was like notable or unique, like Cristiano Ronaldo or I don't know, Ariana Grande, <laughs> the two people that come to mind. But a lot of people that were kind of famous would get the verified badge to prove that it was actually them because there were so many fake accounts popping up like claiming to be them. And I've actually noticed how in the past year or so, so many fake accounts are being made impersonating artists. And I just think it's so bad. Like literally a random person takes screenshots of 
an artist's work, post it as their own using the artist's name and literally impersonating them. And obviously that's really confusing to anyone who kind of stumbles across your profile or the fake one. Sometimes it's hard to kind of differentiate which one's which, which one's actually the legit one. So the blue tick confirms that you are who you say you are and you're the artist and this is the verified account and and that's that. Side note, I feel like watermarking your work is so important, which is definitely something that I need to do with my original wildlife work. And it's funny because I give all these top tips and advice and I actually just need to take my own advice. <laughs> but yeah, back to the blue tick. I think now for artists and creators like us, we can pay a subscription per month, which is what I do. I think it's like 11 eleven dollars or something so about a, a tenner or something a month which in my opinion is is so worth it because I think the more followers you get and the more exposure you have to people online the more fake accounts will be made of your work and as you, of you as an artist and you just don't really want that so having that verification there and you know that you've got that account and it's you and that's that I just think it gives that like confirmation and confidence to anyone new that comes to your account that you are who you say you are basically. I actually think it can help boost your visibility in search results, recommendations and explore pages and therefore it kind of grows your social media a little bit quicker. Um, but you know it's not a guarantee especially because it's pretty much available to everyone now but say if you were searching for someone like back in the day um, and loads of like I'll use the Cristiano Ronaldo uh, example again but say if you typed it if you weren't following him and you typed in his name or footballer or whatever and loads of Cristiano accounts came up if he didn't have the blue tick you'd probably click on a few and think well is this him or is this not him but because he's got the blue tick and he's you know ranked right at the top of the search engine you know that that's the verified account and all the others are just a load of rubbish basically so on a much much smaller scale that's basically what it does for us artists as well <laughs> So when it comes to growing on social media, I'd say number one is consistency. Number two is content, documenting what you can in an engaging way and learn how to edit videos as well. I think that is, you know, such an important skill. Um, I use iMovie, CapCut and InShot to edit my videos, depending on what kind of videos I'm editing. Tutorials, I tend to use iMovie, InShot and CapCut I use for for reels and TikTok content. And number three is to optimize the features on each social media platform so you're using those creative tools like to your advantage. I really hope this topic has been helpful and hopefully you can apply some of these tips to your social media and hopefully it'll help you to grow a little bit more or just give you a bit of a boost that you might need. Growing an audience and a whole online community does take time so be patient and you'll 100% reap the rewards of it. So thank you so, so much for listening and watching. If you're watching on YouTube, remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more art related content, vlogs, podcast episodes and tutorials. And if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, then please remember to leave a review as it really helps to push the podcast. So yeah, thank you for listening to Life of an Entrepreneur and I'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Keep messaging me as well all of your requests or suggestions for upcoming episodes because I'm absolutely loving all of the influx of ideas. And obviously this podcast is to kind of help you really. So anything that you want me to talk about that you think will benefit you, then do let me know and um, I'll add it to my list. I've got a list now that <laughs> people have suggested different episodes. I've now made a list because there's so many. So thank you so, so much for listening and I'll be back next week.